Good morning, Desert Springs Church. Well, choir has five songs to share with you this morning. This is our year-end um, concert, if you will. Um, so it's always kind of bittersweet because we, we need a break, but at the same time, we're, we know we're not going to sing together again until the fall, and it's, it's difficult because we love being together and we love praising the Lord together. So first off, I want to thank all of you for all the support and encouragement that you give choir throughout the year. And I also want to thank Pastor Mark and board members and, you know, everybody that just um, gives us the encouragement and the uplifting that we need. In a, in a day and age when a lot of churches are getting rid of their choirs, not this one. Not this one. Okay? So enjoy these songs. Let them minister to you. It is our gift to you. Hallelujah. 
My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing. Welcome my partner in crime, A.B. Perkins. And my wonderful conductor, Teresa Tarleton. Four. 
prodigal who's thrown their whole life away. Feeling completely unworthy to mention his name. For every soul that's been shattered by choices you made. Father still hears every prayer that broken heart prays. Just when you thought you could somehow outrun him, you chase down my mercy as he proves there's nothing that his blood can't cover and his arms can't reach to redeem. Oh, just when you thought you've exhausted his kindness, his gentle compassion pulls you out of hiding. Just when grace somehow reach the end you find you're forgiven again it's so amazing how he will move heaven and earth heaven and earth to reach through the darkness, the shame, the heartache, the hurt. And when we find out again, living the Savior loves more. The seeing surrender so, so he can renew. Chased down by mercy As he proves there's nothing That his blood can't cover And his arms can't reach to redeem Oh, just when you thought You've exhausted his kindness His gentle compassion Pulls you out of hiding just when you thought that his grace somehow reached the end, you find you're forgiven again. Afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't turn away from His love. Just when you thought you've exhausted His kindness, His gentle compassion pulls you out of hiding. Just when you thought that His grace somehow reached the you find you're forgiven again, forgiven again, forgiven next song features Catherine Gate.
worship. We humbly bow, yet boldly enter in. Tears will flow, for joy is overwhelming. Only in your presence, only.
Well, I know just about everybody in this congregation knows this song. You sang it in Jerusalem.
Welcome to Desert Springs. We're glad you've joined us. This is Pastor Colin with some important announcements. If this is your first day with us, please stop by the Connecting Place counter. We have a gift for you and want to say thank you for coming. VBS is coming. Yes, you heard right. Vacation Bible School is coming June 27th through 30th. This year's theme is Kookaburra Coast, an awesome adventure down under in God's glory, mate. Sorry, I got carried away there. VBS is hosted right here at Desert Springs Church, Monday through Thursday of June 27th through 30th, beginning at 8.30 a.m. for students kindergarten to fifth grade. Be sure to register your kids, grandchildren, or that special young one in your life by going online at visitdsc.org. Just click on the Kookaburra banner and follow the prompts, or reach out to Pastor Lorraine for more information. In addition to our awesome Aussie adventure, VBS needs your help. Please pray and consider volunteering to help VBS this year, and be sure to stop by the VBS booth across the hallway after service to find out how you can bless a young child this summer. Finally, thank you for your loving gifts and your tithes and offerings. We really appreciate your generous support. You can leave your offering as you exit service with one of the ushers at the doors. If you want to know what's going on at Desert Springs Church, check your program or visit us online at visitdsc.org for everything else that's happening. Well, thanks for joining us for worship this weekend, and we want to take a few moments for a time of communion, even online, and, and certainly with uh, COVID restrictions and uh, maybe you're out of the area, you can't be with us in person for maybe one reason or the other, even if you're local or, or far away. Uh, what a great thing that uh, we can still uh, share at Lord's table together. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus in your life and you're seeking to live for him, we'd invite you to take communion with us now. Jesus, of course, commanded us to do so until he returns for us again. And uh, we uh, commune with him in person. And it's a time of remembering uh, the great price, the sacrifice Christ paid in giving his life uh, for the payment of our sins. So if you have some bread, uh, I have just a small roll available right now, and uh, some juice or some wine. I have some actually some, just a little punch here uh, that uh, you can take communion with us. And uh, I believe very much it's not those ingredients as much as it is uh, just our heart uh, before the Lord. Uh, as we're going to look at, uh, of course, in our message this week from 1 Samuel 15. So uh, you can pause if you want to get those elements and then come back or if you're ready uh, and uh, you're prepared to take communion. Uh, let's bow now in prayer. So Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us and for coming and dying for us on the cross. And Lord, as you were dead and buried in the tomb, how we praise you that on the third day you rose again alive to demonstrate that you're God and that the price of our sin is completely paid. We can be fully forgiven by putting our faith in you. And Lord, for all of us who have done that, we come now to your communion table to again celebrate this great gift you have given us in dying in our place. And Father, thank you for the giving of your dear Son. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to live in our lives. And Lord Jesus, now we worship you and we thank you in this special time. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat it, think upon me. Let's think upon the Lord Jesus and all he's done for us. And then after dinner, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood poured out for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Let's remember the Lord and the great price he paid of shedding his blood for our sins. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for all he's done for us. And we're so thankful and so grateful that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Well, hi, Desert Springs family. Thanks for joining us online here again for a weekend of worship together. Hope you enjoyed worship choir. And uh, what a great end of the season, uh, mini concert for us uh, here uh, on recording. And um, we're talking about the deeper life together for several weeks. If you have a Bible, grab it, open it up to James chapter 1, verse 12. If you have an app on your phone or tablet, you can turn your Bible on to James 1, verse 12. And we'll get to that in just a moment. As always, if you have a prayer need, a concern in your life for you or someone you love, let us know. Contact us here at the church office. All our contact information here at the bottom of our main page at visitdsc.org. And then thank you for your faithful support financially. We truly appreciate it. And as always, you can give simply by clicking that large round button here on the main page. That's marked tithes and offering. God bless you uh, and thank you so much. Now, uh, would you just join me for a prayer together? Father, we wanna thank you for your great love for us. And today, as we open your word, we pray you'd speak to us with what you want us to hear, to be challenged in our lives for you and to find victory and success as we follow you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, in your name, amen. Well, uh, this day we're talking about the subject of stability, stability. Last time we were together, it was teachability. It's important to be teachable. If you're gonna be a follower of the Lord, to walk in his ways, you have to learn his ways, and then be willing to apply that, to walk in them. And now we'll talk about stability in our life with the Lord. And, um, uh, maybe today uh, you're facing something hard, wondering if you can just hold on. It reminds me about the three men who decided to go rock climbing together, and uh, they're having a great time until one of the three lost his footing and uh, fell off of the trail uh, down, down, 60 feet down, uh, landing on a small precipice. Uh, saved his life. And uh, he called up to the other two guys and said, hey, uh, I've fallen. And they turned around, noticed, and they said, how are you doing? He said, well, I think I've broken both arms. And they said, wait, wait. They threw a rope down, and of course, in no time, they began pulling him up. They got him about three-fourths of the way back up uh, the side of the mountain when they realized, hey, if both of his arms are broken, how's he hanging out of the rope? And they said, uh, how are you hanging on? And the man answered, with my teeth. All right, so maybe you feel like you're just barely hanging on. Uh, life can be that way. It may not even be a laughing matter for you right now. God says, uh, don't let go. Don't let go of him. Keep pressing on with the Lord in your life. God loves you. He's there for you. He won't let you go. Don't let him go in your life. Uh, James 1.12, our text together for this subject of stability, uh, building it in our lives in Christ and hanging on to it in our lives in Christ, says this, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Well, we all need tempering in our faith, that conditioning to hang on over the long haul to God and his ways. And by definition, to be tempered means to be brought to the desired hardness or strength through the process of heating and cooling. And um, we are all tested in the crucible of life. And if you're using your note sheet, you can download it again here on the main page at visitdsc.org. You'll see where it says uh, note sheet for uh, this weekend. Click on that, print it out, follow along with us. And if you're using the sheet, jot this down, all trials test, all trials test. They challenge us in our response to the difficulty that we encounter. In scripture, we discover that our Lord God loves us and he's rooting for us regarding what we face in life. In Isaiah 42, three, we read, a bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. Trials can distill us. They can remove impurities from our character. And uh, 
hardship may befall you, believer, but uh, don't give in, give up, or give over to it. Romans 8 verse 28 is a familiar verse to many of us. It says this, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Now, that verse does not say that all things are good. We live in a fallen, sinful world, and many of the things that come into our lives are not good, not good at all. But what the verse does say is God promises he can use even the bad, even the painful, even the difficult, even the disappointing, even the disheartening to build us up in godly character. He can bring good from the ashes of our lives. So we want to talk this week on the subject of stability about the important topic of testing, testing in our lives and testing through the difficult life experiences we face, first of all, refines. It refines. Psalm 66.10, For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. The silversmith, of course, is the one who places silver into the middle of a fire in order to heat it. And this is so that the impurities may rise to the surface so that they may be removed from the precious metal. But the silversmith must continually watch this heating process lest it will be too much heat and the silver would be lost. Listen, did you know that a bar of steel worth $5 is worth $10 once it's made into horseshoes? And if the bar is manufactured into needles, it becomes worth about $350. If it's made into delicate springs for designer watches, its value for that amount of steel can reach $250,000 or even more. A bar of steel raises in value dramatically as it is cut to size passed through one furnace blast after another and uh, hammered and manipulated into the desired final shape and purpose as it is beaten, pounded, and finished, cooled, and polished for its excellently designed purpose. So let me ask you, have you ever met a person who has been described as tried and true, a tried and true individual. Well, that is because they have gone through a refining process in their lives. Next, we see that testing reminds. It reminds us. Psalm 54, 4, surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. And testing can point us in the right direction in life. And difficulty has a way of bringing opportunity to our lives to get centered back on the Lord and his ways. And we're given pause to look to the Lord for his comfort and his help and his involvement. So testing reminds us to look up and look to him. And then testing resigns. It resigns to God's will and purposes. Job 13, 15, though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. So testing resigns us to God's uh, will and intent, and we're reminded that it's all about him. Our sense of entitlement leaves, and it's replaced by a dependency on our Lord. And we can be brought back to what's most important, developing a healthy focus for our God in life. So God tests the hearts of those who are his, the Bible says, and it's for our good, it's for our benefit. Now, in times of difficulty, believer, please don't bail, don't bail. In other words, push away from God. It's so easy to say, God, I didn't sign up for this, or God, how could you allow this in my life? Don't turn and run, just hold on, hold on to him. 
This is one of the most important principles for success in your spiritual life and therefore your life overall here in a fallen world. Don't bail. It's an epic fail. Just stay put and uh, you're safer in the middle of a battle with God by your side than on the peaceful seas away from him. And then don't get stale either. Don't get stale. In other words, stuck in the muck of bitterness or disillusionment or anger at another person or yourself or even at God. We can become crusty and, and kind of fatalistic and, and mean, even depressed. Uh, this all is a lack of confidence in our Lord. And when we bail, we actively step out of the ring with God. But equally disheartening, we can also just sit down and give up in life. And when we become stale, we tend to develop uh, faulty convictions and we start to minimize the Lord's importance in our lives and we start to see him as less than all that he truly is and it undermines our faith in God. There's nothing worse than a good looking piece of bread that's become stale. So see beyond your situation, believer, and realize that everything is only for a season. Don't lose your vision for the victory God can win for you. Instead, instead, believer, prevail. Prevail. Rise above. The Bible says God loves you. God is the one who can restore. God is the one who rescues. God is the one who saves. God can strengthen and encourage you. Call out to him. Ask him for it and wait on him for his strength and his renewal to come upon you. God is with you, whether you realize it or not, all the way. You see, testing in our life in Christ, testing is for besting us. The end of our verse in James 1.12, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And so there's a reward for us as we hang in there with the Lord. God builds character, sin destroys it. And every trial in our lives is an opportunity to live up to the test, say, God, help me, help me as I go through this. You know, a dear friend in my life once said to me, Mark, I believe everything in life is a test. And you know, the more I've thought about that statement over the years, the more I've realized how right he is, how right he truly is. So how will you and I respond, believer, when troubles come our way? That's what stability in Christ is all about. Trials bring an opportunity. They bring an opportunity first for certainty certainty. 1 Peter 1, 7, so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And as God takes us through difficulty, through hard situation, through seasons that we may not want to go through, we develop more and more in Christ likeness. Now like you, I've had many hardships in my life, challenges, uh, whether uh, I've been tempted to this or tempted to that. At times I thought, God, is this what I deserve for living my life for you? <laughs> what a mistake. You know, God the Father sent his own son to die on the cross, to suffer and die for us. And I was getting grumpy and upset and complaining and disheartened over a problem in my life. Wow. And then I thought, you know, God, where would I go without you? Where else would I go? Only you are salvation. Only you are life. Only you are hope. Only you hold a bright future for my life. 
So we read in Psalm 73, 26, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Isn't that great? And that's our takeout verse of the week. I hope you'll jot it down. It's so good. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And then, of course, uh, another great thing that we can get through staying with the Lord through times of testing uh, is this quality of stability. James 1, 2 to 4, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So we can get perseverance in our stability. Isn't that great? So take some time to call to mind, believer, those things that God has already helped you with, that he's helped you through, that he's delivered you from in your life. And that will remind you that your God is faithful. And then we receive strength, greater spiritual strength in our lives as we weather the tests of life. The Lord says in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God can give you his strength, his, his power, his help in your greatest time of need. And so we gain a resilience from God a spark of renewal, a new hope in our spirit when we rest and trust in him. Above all, believer, I would say this, to have a stable life in Jesus Christ, no matter what confronts you and may come up against you and uh, turn around and face you in life, remain confident in the Lord. Remain confident in the Lord. Note, uh, the all-important comma here, uh, remain. And uh, remain, I put a comma in the notes there, confident in the Lord. So give room for that comma in life. Remain, remain, remain. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 31. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. And then in Psalm 30, verse 5, Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Trust God, believer, for the outcome. God can intervene. He can work in your life for the best. So remain and gain all he has for you. Would you bow with me? Let's pray. So Heavenly Father, thank you for your love with which you love us. Thank you you love us so much you gave your own son Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sins so that we can be forgiven and assured of heaven. And Lord God, today for all of us who are believers in you, all of us who have accepted you into our lives by faith, said, Lord, come in and forgive me of my sins and I give my life to you. Lord, for all of us that have done that, we say thank you today. Lord, you promised you would never leave us or forsake us. We know that your power is so great, Heavenly Father, it raised your son Jesus from the dead. And uh, Lord, we thank you that you're greater than whatever we face. Lord, right now we turn over to you the things which concern us and we invite you to work powerfully in these things and how we thank you for that. And Lord, uh, give us a strength and a resiliency, a, a perseverance, a determination to hang on to the rope with you in life. Now, if you're not sure you've ever invited Jesus to come into your life to forgive you of your sins, you can do it right now. The Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So talk to the Lord now and settle it. It's the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Just pray now, God's listening. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. I believe you're God's only son, that you died for my sins on the cross and rose from the dead so I can live with you forever in heaven. Thank you for dying for me. Please forgive me of everything and come into my life right now. 
I'm willing to turn from my old ways to live for you. Amen. And God bless you. Hang in there with the Lord. And we'll see you again next weekend.